This is the EG Maui 500EX, and it's sort of a companion bike to the Oahu, both Hawaiian islands, uh, and they're just fun. Kind of like cruisers, round town, good for a little bit of off-roading possibly because they've got these knobby tires and a little bit of a suspension fork, but kind of basic. Definitely a value price electric bike at $19.99. Um, it's got a 500 watt internally geared hub motor paired up with a 48 volt 10 amp hour battery. So it's actually quite powerful and a big step up from the older EG Maui that I've reviewed. And it, it, that one had like a 350 watt motor, 36 volt battery. So you definitely get a lot more power and speed with this. This is a speed pedelec, meaning that in pedal assist level in mode, it can, uh, it can get up to like 28 miles per hour. There are five levels of assist as well as throttle. If you were just using the throttle, it kind of tops out at 20. So um, I'm gonna hit some of the design elements on this bike. Uh, it weighs about 55 pounds, so not super duper light, but considering the more powerful drivetrain, that's not bad, and the suspension fork. Uh, the battery pack itself is like seven pounds. It is removable, locks to the frame right there, as you can see with this key. You don't have to leave the key in when riding, which is nice, because you know it's kind of easier to bump if you do. Go ahead and turn it off. This is considered the, it's kind of a dolphin pack is, is the industry term. And it's got a nice fuse built in. It's got a battery level indicator right here and a charging port as well as a USB port for powering your portable electronics. Like maybe you carry along an iPod or you're using your, your screen for GPS. Although I'm not sure, you know, it, it might be difficult to try to mount the screen because this is already a pretty busy cockpit. Um, so before I get back to that, the ergonomics of this are, are pretty nice. You know, it is a step through frame. You can just come up to it and swing your, swing your leg through instead of trying to swing it over the back. Sometimes when I've done that with bikes, I'll clip my shin on the, the rack and that is no fun. I love that it has a rack. It's got fenders. The fenders are, they're really nice looking. They're just, they're kind of plastic. Um, they've got an extra little arm here with a finger adjust, which is nice. And these little mud flaps, you know, decent quality. Uh, as well as that rack, which is standard gauge tubing right here. So if you have those panniers that clip on, that's gonna work. And it's even got a little bit of a blocker on the side. So good stuff, max weight, 25 kilograms on that. And then the lights, the lights are independent, meaning you're gonna have to use just basic batteries that you buy from the store, maybe rechargeables uh, when they run out. They aren't powered off of this main battery pack, which is too bad because it just means it's extra steps like pressing the power on, and then remembering when you get to your uh, destination to turn them off. Otherwise that battery is gonna wear down pretty quickly. So anyway, that's a, that's a quick overview on, on those elements. Uh, we're looking at a white one here uh, that stands out really nicely. You know, if you're riding in traffic, a lot of the accents are black, but I, I like the white frame and I love that it actually matches this suspension fork. So again, kind of a basic part, SR Suntour XCT, and it has preload adjustment but there's sort of a separate dial on each side of the fork. And I, I don't, you know, it's just, it doesn't have lockout. This isn't that much of an upgrade. It's pretty basic, but it's definitely nice to have. It pairs great with these tires. They're like 26 by 2.125, so a little bit fatter. And having those knobs is just gonna make this a little bit more of an all-terrain uh, bike if you need it. I mean, I'd probably just end up going around the neighborhood with this, especially at those higher speeds, but it's nice to have a little bit of those creature comforts, including the saddle, pretty soft and a little bit oversized compared to some other bikes. Got these ergonomic stitch grips. They're not as soft as some of the puffy ones I've seen, but it, they do give you a, a little bit more to grab onto, which feels nice when you're riding. And even, even the uh, kind of the handlebars here, they're swept back a little bit and you've got an adjustable stem so you can bring the handles closer to you, which is really nice. This is about a 16 inch frame um, as I sort of measured this seat tube. It's a 24 inch reach, so it's a little bit more compact than the Oahu. And again, with that adjustable stem, you can dial this thing in and be pretty comfortable. Uh, and it works, it works great that way. It does have an eight speed drivetrain, which is great with these trigger shifters. Shimano Alivio, decent component set. And you know, we keep talking about that higher top speed, having that extra gear eight instead of maybe six or seven, which is what I see a, a lot on other similarly priced bikes. Um, you know, having eight speeds and having a, a larger chain ring in, in the back there, it's just gonna mean that you're not gonna have to spin as quickly at high speed, that it can actually feel comfortable at those speeds. So that's nice. Um, kind of a chain guard here, Welgo platform pedals, aluminum alloy. 
I like that it has a quick release front wheel just for doing quick maintenance if you need to or if you're trying to transport this or store it. Kind of makes the bike a little shorter. Mechanical disc brakes, Tektro Novella, 180 millimeter rotors, so fairly substantial and that's definitely nice to have if you're going fast, so love that. Tektro brake levers that are a little bit upgraded with the rubber leading edge and motor inhibitors on both of them. So whenever you activate the brakes, it's gonna kill power. You're not gonna have the motor fighting you and it, you know, it just gives you that sense of control that again, at higher speeds and with pedal assist, that's really important. This is a 12 magnet sensor, so it's very responsive. Uh, as soon as you start pedaling almost, it, it kicks in, but you don't really have to push very hard. So that's the difference between a cadence sensor and a torque sensor. Torque sensor is smoother, it's nice for like off-roading where you, you, know, you wanna feel like the bike is a part of you and it's responding naturally, not just in, uh, in quickness and how quick it activates, but also in power. The harder you push, the harder that's gonna accelerate. This one, it's just on or off, but you only have to move your feet. You really don't have to, to do much more. So I kind of like that. One of the complaints I have about this bike, it, however, is the kickstand. You know, it's just, it kind of leans the bike pretty far over a little bit more prone to getting getting bumped over and you know the, the handlebar kind of tilts to the side. It's not really adjustable in terms of length and the foot is kind of small so it can poke through soft dirt and you have to press that little nub to get it to go up. So the first time I was looking at this I was like kicking it and I was like what's going on? It just took me a minute to figure that out. So all in all not bad you know. Good combination of features here at a reasonable price with a nice powerful motor system. So to activate it, we press that little button there, lights up blue, the display immediately comes to life. So that's nice, because sometimes, you know, you, it's like step one, power here, step two, power there. On this bike, you don't have to do it. That It just comes on as soon as you turn on the battery. And I guess for me, that makes sense because if I'm parking it, I remember to turn off the battery. A lot of times on some other bikes, you have to turn it off up here, but that doesn't mean the battery is not off. So anyway, I like that. The display is kind of basic, but it can swivel forward and back a little bit if you don't over tighten it. See that? Kind of swivels front and back. Um, decent real estate on this, and you get all the you know, primary readouts. You got six bar battery level indicator, pedal assist level, it defaults to two when you start out of five. Miles per hour, so speedometer, and then kind of your trip distance or your total distance when you hit this mode selector over here. And again, a little bit more of a generic part, but it's close to the grip, easy to reach and use. Even if you weren't looking down, you could pretty easily click through and change your assist level. But at any point in time, you can override assist with the throttle. So at level zero, it's throttle only mode. Doesn't matter if you pedal, that's not gonna impact the system. It's all about the trigger throttle here. As Soon as you arrow, arrow up, you can still use throttle, but you're getting assist. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna start off in the throttle mode just to kinda show you what the motor sounds like and looks like. It is a little bit more uh, you know, pronounced. You can hear it because it's a larger motor, a little bit more powerful and you get that high top speed. So let's do it. Yeah, almost up to 18 miles per hour. Pretty short, uh, pretty short distance there. So I'm impressed with it. Uh, there aren't a lot of hills around here, but I imagine it would perform all right. You know, I'm about 135 pounds and uh, having that extra power is nice when you're, when you're hauling gear around with that rack maybe or pulling a bike trailer or something like that. Now I'm gonna sh switch it to pedal assist and take it all the way to five just to give you a sense for how quickly it activates. I'm also gonna switch gears. Whoa, that's how quick it activates. Switching gears. There we go. So you can see it activating pretty quickly and aggressively, because I'm at level five, but it also stops quickly. Like as soon as you stop your feet, it's not like there's a lot of surge happening where it's still accelerating. Uh, and of course you have those motor inhibitors on the brake lever. So you can always pull those and get the motor to quit pretty immediately. So yeah, I tend to ride more like in level three. There we go. Just a little bit less jarring. Of course we can work on that top speed, get us going a little bit faster. It's a 
pretty comfortable body position, you know? I like the swept back bars. And because the battery on this new Maui is mounted sort of to that down tube, it's not quite as flexy. Like the frame doesn't flex as much when you, when you kind of jar it around like this. It's still less stiff than the Oahu because it's got this step through frame. It's just a little bit more, a little bit more flexy, but that's the trade off when you want to get a, a step through bike. Um, I also, I guess, you know, there, it, it's worth mentioning there's no water bottle cage or anything here because the uh, battery sort of taken up that spot. Um, and the battery is a little bit, you know, it can be a little bit awkward. It, you know, it's, it's definitely kind of impacting the amount of space that you have here, you know, and if you stopped hard or you, you know, kind of stepped off, you try not to bump yourself on it. Um, but it disperses weight more evenly across the frame. Again, there's the, there's the motor, there's a seven pound battery. And the fact that it's removable, is just gonna, it makes it I guess a little bit easier if you if you wanted to ride this as only a bicycle someday, or you know maybe you're locking the bike outside. You want to store the battery inside so that it you know avoids those extreme temperatures and keep it charged and stuff. I think that's a good overview. So that's the EG Maui 500 EX for the full write-up on this and other EG electric bikes. I'll see you back at electricbikereview.com. Ride safe.